So we've already got one of these things coming out. Let's change gears a little bit and go back to what we were talking about in terms of what shoes are you most excited for to come out this year? And I've I've got a list that we can finally talk about a couple of them. But can you go back through your top three that you were really excited for? Yeah, so darn it. I grab I always have like 10 to 15 pairs next to me. I feel like I'm underprepared having one, two, three, four, five pairs next to me. Um we, one of them mentioned was the Saucony Endorphin Elite. Definitely. Um, I'm curious to see the changes made in between the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 to the Elite. You know, um, obviously, if they're going to be changing the name, the lineage, not having an Endorphin Pro 4 per se on the on the nomenclature of it, yeah. this shoe is going to be unique to its own DNA. So I'm curious to see... Where they go with that, I want to see what that looks like as far as the racing category goes for them. So that's one of the ones that I'm most curious to see just from a consumer standpoint and just see, okay, how different is this shoe? Um, because everyone's making a high stack rocker new generation racing shoe. Like, what are you doing different? You know, so I want to see what that is. Um, the other one, too, is a pretty big redesign of a shoe that a lot of people genuinely liked. And so that was the Deviate Nitro Elite from Puma. A lot of people liked it. You know, it was a very forgiving, quote unquote, forgiving super shoe. Like it was kind of like the people's shoe where it's like not this super exaggerated rocker, not super high off the ground. I think it was 36 in the heel, 28 in the forefoot, eight millimeter drop, like very familiar feel to it. But it still had a nitrogen infused PIBA base midsole, carbon fiber plate. It was bifurcated in the forefoot, so it was a little bit different, a um, little bit more flexibility up front. It was just a shoe that almost felt like, <laughs> for and I mean this in a nice way, like it almost just felt like a normal shoe with super shoe DNA. That's and it was definitely that is very yeah. accurate. That's yeah, yeah. and it, it, the and most like, comfortable super shoe by far. Yeah, and it's just like one of those shoes. Like, oh wait, it's also like six point seven ounces. Like, this is just like a light, nimble, nice shoe to run it. And it doesn't feel crazy responsive. It doesn't feel like this revolutionary shoe, but it's really comfortable. It's really lightweight and it's it's fun to run in. So with that said, they're redesigning the second version. I believe the forefoot's now one piece. It's not bifurcated anymore. I believe they're stiffening it up. I think they're increasing the toe spring on it. And this is also going off of things I've seen at tre where i wasn't present i'm watching other people's videos of these things and that's okay that's we can design. talk about that that's yeah fine. yeah we can talk about it it's out there um so i haven't held this shoe i was not part of the testing process for this shoe i, I don't know much you know i'm just speculating here on 2023 but it is still using the um deviant uh the nitro elite midsole so we're still using that nitrogen infused piba based midsole redesign of the plate i believe they changed the upper a little bit um, I'm not exactly sure what their upper changes were, but one thing that was cool, did you see the colorway? They're going the red yeah. on blue. They're doing yes. the, the mismatch, like yeah. kind of going back to Puma's roots there. Like, that's cool. I like that. I, I do. Um, I wish more shoes did that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that shoe. I, 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 I'm just curious to see the changes because it is a redesign. And I think the feeling on foot is going to be different from the first. Enough to where you could maybe even justify a change in the nomenclature. Um, mm. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, if, yeah. it's, if it's more flexible, did they add stack height? Do you know? I don't. I don't actually uh, know. We're gonna find out. I don't know. Yeah, you know well, who we could ask about this? I mean, we'll just not go there. Um, it's like one of those things. Somebody like on our team really, already really, has it already. <laughs> it's like if you really, really want to know, you could probably go find out. But um no i, I think we mentioned it on a previous he, he brought it out as a on a previous episode right i don't think we have numbers though oh that's fair okay never mind. yeah i mean companies are a little bit hush hush on these things for a reason yeah. okay fine so you said uh, yeah. so the 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 deviate elite 2 is yeah, one what are your the, other what are your top oh yes three? and vaporfly 3 Yes. So I think when we take a look at the lineage of the Vaporfly, right? Vaporfly 4% was this new thing. No one had really seen a shoe like this. Um, it, I mean, it did change the running world. That shoe genuinely made a change in how we make footwear, especially really for did. race day. With that said, you take a look at 4% to next percent. 
they it, it lost a tiny bit of weight, right? I yeah, think they I like made the vapor bit. weave and then they yeah. added the stack a little bit more. Yeah. With the with the Zoom X. And then they made next percent two, which gained a little bit of weight, but they changed the upper um to more of that mesh material. And then they I don't know how much changes they actually made in the midsole itself. Um but they it was minimal. Like it wasn't like it was a giant change in the yeah. shoe. Like they played it pretty safe there. I feel like Vaporfly 3 should be due for a bigger change. And just looking at geometrically from the pictures I've seen, it looks like they are kind of changing the shoe a little bit. It does look like they've finally done some justice on trying something new, especially with the midsole design. Because a lot of the midsole, it's just it's kind of the same, right? I mean, that, that's that's kind of being mean, but it's relatively similar. Um, some outsole changes and things like that in terms of what how they're doing. But outside of that, it was pretty similar. Whereas at version three, they're finally doing some cutouts. Yeah. But I, I think the outsole is similar to the forefoot of yeah. Alpha Fly 2, I think. Just yeah. based on uh, the, the, the new one or the, yeah. The three, yeah. Yeah, the three, There's there looks like there's also the plate is now exposed in the midfoot, if I'm remembering correctly. We don't have any yet. So we'll be trying to get our hands on a pair um, but things are definitely different. So that's, that's yeah. number two. What's number three for you? That was three. Oh, that was three. What was the first two? Uh, Endorphin Elite and DV. Oh, that's right. That's right. Too. But I'm also right. curious, like they're still using Zoom X, right? Like they didn't do any overhaul as, or change or anything unique there. As far as I, mean, I know, anything somebody, unique, like they, they, I mean, like I said, they changed the, the running world. Someone there, but, comment below if you know, cause we, yeah. we haven't seen it yet. But, but yeah, Zoom X has been out for a minute now, so I'm sure they got something up their sleeve. If it's not right. this version, it's the next. But um, yeah, I, I'd be curious to see Vaporfly 3 because yeah. Vaporfly 2 is one of those ones that like I had to really warm up to, you know? It wasn't something that I put on and I was like, oh, I love this, yep. you know? I'd be curious to see if the changes in Vaporfly 3 make it something that suits me a little bit better. I don't know. We'll see. It's just funny. I had the same experience where I really love the original... Uh, next percent or not the next percent the original Vaporfly when I managed to get my hands on the next percent it was good it didn't have the same quite the same as the original but it was still a solid shoe and the next percent too I mean you reviewed it I didn't because I just I wasn't that impressed I was like okay this is it's definitely a super shoe right but I just there were other things that fit me better were more stable and just kind of work better I'm very curious to see if they kind of if they bump things up because I think now Nike's got they've the people are catching them and I think now they got to move so we'll see if they do. Um, I gotta say my top three are actually similar at least the well not similar it's the first one similar. I think the Endorphin Elite is the one that I'm most excited for just because we're we haven't tested it we've been aware of it. Um, I'm very excited to get that shoe on my feet because I think that's going to also match in a similar category that the Wave Rebellion Pro and the Alpha Fly One sat um and from we under, understand specs are kind of similar if not a little bit lighter so um don't have exact ones but very curious on that one just because it looks awesome and i'm super excited for the new midsole they're using and that stuff i would say number two is going to be a little bit controversial but i'm really excited to try the kinvara pro for a couple reasons for one i love lightweight trainers and i'm just curious to see what that shoe looks like is it's meant to kind of be a people's racer but also that lightweight trainer which is what i think lightweight trainers really are so kinvara pro is probably is second seeing the new super foam in it seeing what a plate does like what what have they done with that is my other my second one um my third one which is the one i've been complaining about for like six seven months ever since i saw it and then they can't buy it is the on cloud cloud bloom echo three and you i know, can't tell I'm, if I'm i should excited be excited for cloud bloom I, echo three i, I can't I, decide that if should I, be on my list I can't decide if, if I should be excited for it or terrified that I'm going to be disappointed. Um, but I, I'm i hyped up. I really want to try it because version two, because there was a version one that really wasn't released, but version two was really disappointing. And I, I have faith in on. I think they're getting like Cloud Monster was a great example of like they're really progressing. So I want to see the Cloud Boom Echo 3. I hope it doesn't disappoint me, but that's probably my third one. Honorable mention. I got to give to the Brooks Hyperion Elite 4. I've been... Yeah, they, you think? They, it's already out in the wild, seeing people wear it. Des Linden was wearing it recently at the cross-country oh, championships. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah. again, another one. I'm putting that as an honorable mention because I... Brooks, you have 
with racing shoes for the last several years, you have let my hopes down every single time. So the Hyperions, I'm really hoping you step up. I have faith in you, but you be, it's been disappointing so far. So it's the same thing as the Cloud Boom Echo, except a little bit more like I'm afraid of it, but I still really want to try it because Brooks, I believe in you. I know you can get there. Um, I still like love my memories of the st5 racer and the t7 the t7 was one of my favorite racing oh shoes, yeah so the t series really, was fun I, it was a I great shoe the series yeah. yeah so come on brooks let's get back there so that was i know this is four but those are probably the ones that i'm most excited about and yet you know david and i are are kind of biased toward the faster stuff and people have mentioned that before um because we tend to run a little bit faster i think the training the tr- the training shoe world 2022 was was really good. I mean, it there was. was a couple of shoes that we didn't that we didn't give enough credit to. I think the Saucony Triumph 20 was one yes. of them that was really one hundred phenomenal. Like that is a great shoe. I mean, if you have a little bit more narrow foot. Um, yeah, you're man. Saying, if the if the Super Blast never came out, like that would have that yeah, <laughs> that would have made my honorable mention because it was on Cloud Monster and Triumph yeah. 20. Like that was right. like oh these are like these are my maximalist shoes. Nothing's gonna yeah. touch it. And then Super Blast yeah. came out, and then that kind of changed that. But for me, I yeah. mean, we could argue whatever, whatever, right. whatever maximalist cushion is. Right. I um, think this, yeah, you're right on that. The Super Blast was another great one. The Fuel Cell LC Trainer, which is changing big time and going to be a little bit more moderate in terms of its stack height. Um, I'm very excited for honestly, this is not a racing shoe. The new Vongo from New Balance, like yeah, they, they revamped it. They yeah. made the definition of what I think a stable neutral shoe is. So I'm super excited to try that out so just for the but listeners the Vongo, hey we're talking about non-racing shoes by the way so for, for the sake of argument here yeah vongo is supposed to be a stability shoe so if you it make a stability supp- neutral shoe yeah is that a stability shoe i don't know i don't have the full specs on it i was drooling over that video <laughs> oh oh another th- probably another excited one is the brooks uh hyperion but they're going to make a hyperion gts so I've been talking Ooh. for a while about finding Hyperion Elite those, GTS or Hyperion Tempo GTS. Hi, well, it's, they're calling it Hyperion instead of Hyperion Tempo, but it's a Hyperion Tempo GTS. Okay. And so for the listeners, you know that I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, for the listeners, I always talk about why the the light stability faster shoes are dead. Right? There's not really a ton of them. The DS Trainer was killed off. There's not a ton in that area. Yeah, there's the Launch GTS, which not my favorite. But to have a something faster that's got a little bit of stability to it. So for those of us that have stability needs and want a faster shoe, yes, the Tempest was great, but it's still in that 8.9 out. So it makes it more like a longer more a distance trainer, yeah. racing shoe or like light trainer to have that hope. I'm hoping like mid seven ounces for this. That's the other one that I'm pretty excited for. Any other trainers or like lightweight trainers that you're excited for? Anything you've seen? Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see a couple things like expand upon their lineage. I don't have some of these confirmed, but I think Reebok has had a great go with the forever float ride energy. Oh, um, how did I forget about the zig yeah. stuff? Ah, oh, and so they'll I'm be, so sorry, I, Reebok. I think they're going to be updating for a version five this year. Um, I've been enjoying that shoe. We just had Symmetros two sent to us enjoying that shoe as well. Um, I'm just kind of curious to see where they go with the daily training line because the float ride energy has a lot of potential being in that lightweight trainer category. It's a versatile shoe that you can do a lot in. And I think they, um, they almost made it a little bit too Symmetros like in the version three and four. Yeah. And now that they brought Symmetros back, like, do they change float ride energy five? Like that's what I'm curious to see and differentiate the two. I, I got to say, training wise, maybe one of the shoes I'm most curious about curious about is the the energy the energy like the Zig series that they have. Where I don't know if people remember that that was a long yeah it time was like that crazy looking the, the, the yeah. Zig Tech came out and I remember seeing that actually the first time I saw that even was back Adidas when had I was a shoe at, that was like that I think so yeah back when I was in college when I was at University of Puget Sound in the biomechanics lab and we were doing some footwear studies that was the first time I saw the Zig Tech and I was like what the heck is this. So it was not very comfortable, to be honest. And I, but I'm curious now to see that with some of these new foams and some of the geometry changes. I'm like, hey, what's what's going on? So I think I'm wondering if 2023 will be the year that we continue to see some of these super aspects continue and just people playing with geometry on different levels 
into training shoes too. So yeah, we hype up some of the racing stuff, but David and I are still excited about some of the trainers out there. So I will say too, like one company that's been just growing on me with each and every single year that I don't think it's talked about enough is Newton. I think Newton, Ooh, those transitions are getting shoe. cleaned up. Yeah, yes. I think they've got a couple things brewing. They've been really working on making those transitions smoother. I think a lot of people are like, oh, if I don't land on my forefoot, this shoe's going to kill me. It's like, no, no. it's not. that's not the case. Like The shoes are actually transitioning pretty well, and they have pretty lively toe-offs. Um, with each like iteration of the gravity and with each iteration of the fate and like different of these shoes like i've actually been enjoying that company more and more with each year um so i'm curious to see what they do in 2023 they have also put a really big push towards their sustainability sustainability uh initiatives so i'm curious to see like how it performs we've gotten a couple of them now that have been based in that world and I actually have really enjoyed it. I think the Gravity Plus, I, I, I did really like that shoe. It yeah. just barely missed getting an award for me. Same for the Distance Plus. Um, not necessarily as a racing shoe, but as a training companion. Um, but I'm curious to see now that they got that racing shoe coming on the horizon here. I'm, I'm just curious to see what they do as a company. Um, I think they're knocking on the door. I hate to say being relevant again. They, they're still relevant, but it's just... Being one of those companies that people like sparks a little bit of a thought process like, oh, yeah, you got those on, you know, like, how do you like them? You know, like, like just one of those things where yeah. like it sparks a n more interest in the company from a general consumer standpoint, not just from like a niche um, consumer standpoint. So I think Newton is one that I'm interested in. I think Asics did a lot of that this year. So I don't know if they'll be doing pushing as hard next year. Um, I, who knows? Uh, I think they need to. I th I'm very curious. You think to so? See. I, don't, I, think I thought so. 2022 was big for them. It a lot of like training wise and stuff like that was. I was honestly a little bit disappointed in the plus series for the meta speeds. I think 2023. There, I'm hoping they're going to pick it up. Their training stuff looks really good. I think it was, I can't remember if it's the Cumulus. No, it's the new Nimbus that they totally redid. I'm very excited to see what they do. They needed a training shoe wise. So, yeah. Um, they, yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But yeah, this kind of I mean, I didn't need one, but like yeah. to keep up with modern progressions and things. That's, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, I, th I still think 2023 is going to be exciting. I think there's going to be more shakeups and it's really cool to be in the, in actually, the footwear game. Yeah. During this time. 361. 361. They're a company that I feel like has always been a firmer, again, I hate to say this, but like kind of like a more boring company as far as the way it transitions, the livelihood of the shoe, outside of the Spire and the Strata. Like their premium offerings were pretty solid, but they were a little different. Like they're like, oh, it's a max cushion shoe. It's like, I don't think it's a max cushion shoe, but it's a pretty fun shoe to run in. Like it's got, like it was fast and it transitioned good. We got the Spire 5. That review should be dropping any day now if it's not already by the time this comes out. Um, it worked well for me. They're, they're updating more P-backspace midsoles. They took out the carbon shank in the midfoot. They're starting to play around with these materials a little bit more. So I'm curious to see what they do just as a company. You know, I don't, I'm don't. i not expecting them to be company of the year next year. I just think I'm curious to see what they do. So you're, you're curious to see some of these smaller companies going, hey, what are they going to start bringing to the table? Which, by the way, totally off topic, and I'm going to get in trouble for this. Bach, if you're listening to this, would you please publish the Hurricane Review? I can't. I can't no, I can't contain this man. Oh. I found this shoe on eBay. No. Got sent it to David. And Bach's like, no, nah, we're not going to publish this. All right. BJ's probably going to cut that out, huh? I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. All right. So it's getting late. We're going to close up shop here. Again, our subjective question is after everything we've talked about now, let, let us know if there's any change. <laughs> Comment below on whatever platform you're watching or listening on. What shoe or shoes are you most excited for in 2023? We've clearly got lists and they're expanding the more we keep talking. But we want to hear from you what you're excited about because that's what we're going to try to help get us to go, hey, what shoes do we need to go? What, what, do the, what, is our, what do the people want to hear about? So we'll work on that 